Hello everyone, this is Cody Lee of BlackCatBooks.org, author of Eye of the Dragon, Cruel and Beautiful, Rabbit Hole, King Dio, and Lauren Frey, available now. So, here we have Review to Ec USA, once again, going after Nintendo, trying desperately to pretend that Nintendo is doing wrong, that Nintendo is is a blight on the video game industry and needs to be dealt with. They are anti-consumer. They don't they don't care about you. They hate you even. So let, let, let's see what uh, this video is about. Give me something physical, bro. I'm some tired of the digital distribution. I, I, I hate his skits, they're so I've awful. I've been talking about this for a very long time, and companies have made it abundantly clear that they don't give a crap about preserving games unless they can milk the consumer dry and make them pay for something over and over again and rebuy it. Here's the thing. You don't have to buy games when they re-release them. That That's something that uh, people like this don't understand. I still play a lot of my old consoles, a lot of my old... A lot of my old, uh, a lot of my old physical games. Like I don't need to, to subscribe to Nintendo Switch Online in order to play Super Mario 64 or Ocarina of Time or Banjo Kazooie or Pilot Wings or Super Mario World or any of that stuff. Like I have other formats for it. I have like I have it on other stuff. So the entire argument that like, oh man, I I've paid for these games already. Why do I have to pay them again? It falls flat because the vast majority of people who are playing these games don't own them. Like, if you played them in the past, you you uh, you probably sold your console and moved on, which is why you're interested in uh, Nintendo Switch Online or the eShop to begin with. Like, people, most people who still own and play these games regularly won't necessarily upgrade to uh, Nintendo Switch Online unless they're, like, hardcore enthusiasts who want to just ex experience these games on a new console. A game 13 times, they have no interest in it. They'll go after websites. Nintendo has done this before, go after websites where there are ROMs from dead companies and development companies that the licenses are in limbo. The only way you can get these games is if you buy an expensive physical copy, something. Or wait for an official release. That's become more and more common in recent in recent day uh, in recent years with companies uh, taking. IPs that are in limbo, stuff like Crash Bandicoot, Tie the Tasmanian Tiger, Turok, uh, all this stuff, and sort of re-release it on Switch, like giving it like a, a sort of an upgrade, sort of a, a remastering it, like maybe adding in some new features and kind of doing stuff. I've recently been playing uh, Blaster Master Zero, which uh, the first game is actually a remake of the original Blaster Master, and I believe like the uh, the sequels are like entirely new games using the same engine. So it's uh. You know, companies are doing all sorts of things to make these games available. You, you know what I mean? Like, uh, this argument that um, uh, these games aren't available is, is simply not true. It, it never was, really. But um, this kind of this kind of goes into what I've been talking about, saying when it comes to the, uh, the eShop debate. Is that, like, it's not necessarily about the eShop. It's about pirates trying to justify their own actions. And uh, Rich in this video seems to be taking the stance of the pirates. Uh, Arr, we should be able to play all these games on, on our PCs just because we have nothing else to play. The games are expensive, I should say. Or you get the ROM. And if you're not... Look, I'm anti-piracy. Oh yeah, sure, but Rich. Sure you are. This is where you don't make the game available and the only way you can get the game is by pirating it. Then I'm for piracy. That may be a controversial hot take, but if you're offering no other <laughs> way... Wait, wait, I'm against piracy, but I'm for piracy? That, that Those statements... It, it's like Rich, like... Rich used to flip-flop between video from video, but <laughs> now he's flip-flopping in, like, less than 10 seconds. That legit was, like... <laughs> it took 10 seconds to flip-flop on his stance. Like, oh, man, flippity-flop, you ship wop Wow, what a what a joke! Way to purchase the game, and you're giving the customer no choice but to get a pirated ROM to play it, and you're not offering the game anywhere. You're not giving them a way to preserve their library that they spent 
Nintendo Switch Online, they, they've, uh, they've given statements about this. Reggie has given statements about this. Uh, t the plan with Nintendo Switch Online is eventually to have every single game from every single Nintendo console on the platform. Like, they're still fleshing out the NES library. They're still fleshing out the Super Nintendo library. They, they have to do the N64 library. There's a lot of games they still need to add. But that's what they're doing. And and people like Rich are conveniently ignoring this because, like, oh, man, the, the Nintendo Switch Online is bad. But but it's not bad. Like, that, that, that's that's kind of the point is the, re the, the reason I have such an issue with this video is that these games are readily available. They have the, the platform available to re-release these games. Like, at this point, it's just ironing out the licensing issues, coming to deal co – making deals with all these companies and getting all of these games released on Nintendo Switch Online. thousands upon thousands of dollars on in some cases on previous generation consoles, then yeah, I am pro-piracy in those instances. Sorry, not sorry. Now, if you remember early last year, there was a big fallout with Sony and a big drama because they, on July 2nd, were going to shut down the PSP and PS3 stores, and on August 27th, they were going to shut down the PS Vita store, and people were like, yeah, we're not having this. Like, we still enjoy playing these systems, and this is really screwed up that you're doing this, Sony. Knee jerk reaction. Access to these games. Bring up Sony. We'll talk about Nintendo. Yes, yeah, sure. Download the games that you already purchased, but maybe there are games on there that people want to purchase that they may have never played before. They want access to those libraries. So around mid April, they changed course and they decided to do this. Instead, this comes from The Verge. Upon further reflection, however, it's clear that we made. Sony did this for, like... Sony will, like, bend over backwards for any kind of positive PR from the public. They look at this knee-jerk reaction and just and just say to themselves, oh, this is something we can do to make ourselves look good. Like, even though we're the worst, worst of the three platform developers, we're the worst company in gaming, we always have been, we can, um... We can placate our fanboys by just... by just keeping these stores open for a little bit lo while longer. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. The wrong decision here. So today I'm happy to say that we will be keeping the PlayStation Store operational for PS3 and PS Vita devices. PSP commerce functionality will retire on July 2nd, 2021 as planned, which I think is great because a lot of these games you still can't purchase on current gen platforms. It's so wait, 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 wait. Nintendo, Sony, or Microsoft. They're retiring the PSP one? <laughs> Nobody brings that up. Like, oh man, Sony, like, oh, I was told specifically that Sony was keeping the eStore up on all of their consoles, but no, like, PSP is going down, but the PlayStation 3 and the Vita are staying up? Why? Like, who is buying games on Vita? Everyone, <sighs> nobody owns a Vita. So I'll give you options. Microsoft is the best with it because they were really, really staunch on backwards compatibility and until they weren't, <laughs> until recently. But some of these games, it's not like every one of these games are going to get a remaster or they're going to be redone for current-gen consoles or PC. So a lot of them will get lost in the void, and that sucks. So it was good to see Sony mostly reverse course on that. I mean, it, we got to be understanding with, with the PSP. The PSP is going all the way back to 2004. But... Even that, like, maybe there are games I want on the PSP that I could have downloaded that I can't get anywhere else. That sucks. And it's not like there's a huge... Did you... Did you... When was the last time you logged onto the PSP store? When was the last time you went on the PS3 store? When was the last time you went on the Vita store? That's that's another thing people aren't really bringing up when it comes to, like, the backlash when it comes to this. Is no one that's complaining has bought games from these platforms. They're all like major Steam drones or like uh, con uh, current gen only console players. Like they have, they don't go back to these old stores and look through through them to find and uh, try and find a hidden gems and stuff like that. They're, they're not hardcore gamers. Like Rich is not a hardcore gamer. This is obvious from anyone who's, who's seen his videos. Like, like I don't, they're, you're not <laughs> – it's not realistic to expect these online stores to remain up forever, 
right? Like, it sucks, but I saw it coming years ago. I anticipated it. I went through my entire 3DS and Switch library to find everything that I wanted to have. And uh, I'm basically good at this point. I think I might need to download Ace Attorney Six again. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to check so it's on my console, so uh, so I don't lose it. But uh, other than that, though, I, I think I'm good. Uh, Rich, Rich, Rich never did that. Like, if there were any games on these stores that you wanted, you would have had them years and years ago. But here we are, years after these consoles were relevant. And you're whining about the e-stores going down? Like, no. Like, if anything, I would ask the developers, uh, the creators, uh, the companies who own these specific games to consider re-releasing their titles on new hardware. Like, that might actually be a good publicity stunt. It's just be like, yeah, the, uh, our, our games are going down, but we're going to re-release them on Switch. Like, that's really all they need to do. Um like, why are you blaming Nintendo for this? Like, it, it's it's the same thing all the time. Like, oh, man, Nintendo shouldn't do this. Like, Sony did this the right way. No, it's it's not Nintendo's problem. Like, the stores were always going to go down. We always knew this. This was always in an, in, in, an inevit inevitability. I, I, I don't see enough... <sighs> Rich is just full of shit when you get right down to it. It's a digital store, mom and pop shop, where you can get some of these games are digital only, and you can't purchase a physical copy of them. So even if you want to go on eBay or or to some uh, independent video game store, which there are none by me anymore, guess what? You're shit out of luck. Well, Nintendo has announced on their support pages that they will be shutting down the Wii U and Nintendo 3DS shops in the future. And they give dates and some explanations here. This is what they had to say. As of May 23rd, 2022, it will no longer be possible to use a credit card to add funds to an account in... 2022. <laughs> 2023. Like, next year. You have an entire year to go back through these through this catalog and find all the games you wanted. Like, I, I don't understand the backlash. I don't understand the argument. It makes no sense. Nintendo eShop on Wii U or the Nintendo 3DS family of systems, which I'm very thankful that I purchased some games for the Wii U I bought for a video review coming soon. As a matter of fact, on my secondary YouTube channel today, literally right after I'm done filming this, I'll be live streaming me playing Wii U games, so make sure to go to RTU streams. Rich, I'm not, I'm not watching your streams. Fuck off. <laughs> I have better things to do. I'd rather make my own stream. As of August 29th, 2022, it will no longer be possible to Alexa, use stop. Nintendo eShop cards to add funds to an account in Nintendo eShop on Wii U or the Nintendo 3DS family of systems. However, it will still be possible to redeem download codes until late March 2023. Even after late March 2023 and for the foreseeable future, which... I guess that, that disturbs me a little bit because they didn't say just for good because if you bought these games, you should have permanent access to them. It will still be possible to re-download games and DLC, receive software updates, and enjoy online play on Wii U and the Nintendo 3DS family of systems. Now, this is the ominous question that was asked on the FAQ, and their answer is very telling here. Uh, once it is no longer possible to purchase software in Nintendo eShop on Wii U or the Nintendo 3DS family of systems, many classic games for past platforms will cease to be available for purchase anywhere. Will you make classic games available to own some other way? If not, then why? Doesn't Nintendo have an obligation to preserve its classic games by continually making them available for purchase? Across our Nintendo Switch online membership plans, over 130 classic games are currently available in growing libraries for various legacy systems. 130 games on Nintendo Switch online, and people still try to argue it's a bad deal. That's uh, really unbelievable to me. And it's uh, constantly expanding all the fucking time. And Rich is just gonna shit on it all. Of I I already know he's going to do this. It's like Nintendo Switch Online, it's a bad service. Ugh. The games are often enhanced with new features such as online play. We think this is an effective way to make classic content easily available oh, to a broad range of. Get up so early, I don't even... All right. 
to the players. Within these libraries, new longtime players can not only find games they remember or have heard about, but other fun games they might not have thought to seek out otherwise. We currently have no plans to offer classic content in other ways. And if you go to the actual FAQ, it's not there anymore. I actually got that part of the FAQ from Kotaku.com because Nintendo pulled the Streisand effect and tried to sweep it under the rug. Because it makes sense. It's <laughs> not the Streisand no effect, you, you idiot. Uh, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> you now, fucking idiot. I know what argument can be made here. And I, the Streisand effect is what first. happens when you try and censor material and uh, the public starts talking about it anyway because you censored it. Like, Nintendo doesn't pull the Streisand effect. They. <laughs> like, that's not how that works. It's not like they're anyway. making Super <laughs> Nintendo games to be available. It's not like they're manufacturing Super Mario World to be available to purchase. Touche, you're right. I hear you. Here's the thing, though. I can't purchase a physical copy of that. I can, per I can go either online, maybe pay a little too much money, or go somewhere and, and, and get a copy of that old game because it's physical. Okay? I, um, it's, it's, I actually finally listened to one of my subscribers. I, I don't know. Like, they've been re-releasing lots of, like, Game & Watch stuff. I, I don't think physical is ever really going away in any any real capacity, but I do think it's getting increasingly niche. I, I've noticed, uh, I've been leaning a lot more towards digital games these days. I have di I have Animal Crossing di uh, digitally, I got Wii Sports digitally. Like, I think in the future, um, digital purchases are going to be a lot more commonplace. And um, I think, I, I don't think physical media is really, really all that necessary. Um, like right now, I, I really see no value in having physical games. I really like being able to switch between games whenever I want, and um, changing games is kind of a chore. Like, um, I, I don't really see a problem with any of this. Like, what exactly is the controversy? What What exactly does Nintendo? What is there, What exactly is Nintendo doing that? Uh, <laughs> That is uh, disrespecting their customers. There's nothing. Like, all of their classic games are available on Nintendo Switch Online. And, uh, like, there are digital versions of a lot of uh, a lot of games that aren't available on uh, Nintendo Switch Online yet. Like, uh, Contra 3 and Castlevania. I, uh, I played both recently. Like, there are... You know, it's up to the individual company, like, to re-release these games. And uh, I, I, I have no problem with what Nintendo is doing right now. But Rich is trying to make it out to be like Nintendo is ruining the industry or some shit. Rivers, shout out to Hyrule's Evil. She gets the first get it ever get it ever and she's right. I love this thing. And look, this is a cartridge for the games are on here. That's what the big selling point of this is. So in the future, if Evercade goes out of business, which I hope they don't, they have a really good thing on their hands here. I could go and be like, hey, I want to get an Evercade. This is the Data East collection. Actually, my favorite collection over here is the Technos with Super Double Dragon. I forgot how good that game is. But my point being is that... How many of these fucking tablets does he own? It cease to exist. I understand these are older, more simplistic games. I get it. But still, there is a cartridge and the actual games are on here. So if they go under, I can still up, go out and get this cartridge, buy it from some indie store on eBay or wherever, and hey, look at me. I'm now playing the Data East collection on my Evercade, even though Evercade is out of business. This is where the problem is. And what annoys me is, look, Nintendo, I get it. If people, like, if there is a new Switch game that comes out, like when there was, when Metroid Dread came out, does he, does he think that Nintendo Switch Online is go, going to go away? Because it's it's not. Like, uh, <laughs> I have no idea what he's trying to say. Like, oh man, physical, ugh, whatever. At that game, they, the ROM was dumped and people were emulating it. It was actually running better than it did on the Switch. No, that's not like, true. a couple days after it came out. And that may be an overstatement. I can understand you wanting to quash that. But... When there are these older games, like, who's clamoring after Data East games? Well, now I'm sure that someone owns the IP. Obviously, they're making cartridges for it. But a perfect example of a game that's like an IP limbo that 
because there's no one pushing it out there for resale in any way, shape, or form. I always think of it was developed by, and it seems like these companies are out of business from what I've seen, Radical Entertainment and Infinity. This is for the Nintendo Entertainment System. It's a game called The Battle of Olympus, and it was published by another dead company, Broader Bond Software. And it reminds me a lot of The Legend of Zelda to The Adventure of Link. And amazing music. I like the gameplay. And where is it? Why can't I download a game like that? Why does a ROM site have to be... Now, of course, if it's games that Nintendo is selling still, like Super Mario World, or you can get with Nintendo Switch Online, like Super Mario World, I understand that. That could hurt their business. But what about games like this? Why is the Battle of Olympia... Why are you making ROM sites tough to distribute games that you don't give a crap about? And, and this is what bothers me, is that... It's probably is because like people like that... We'll, like this, we'll continue like just trying to push the envelope and trying to get like, oh yeah, if, if I can download this niche stuff, why can't I download Super Mario World and stuff like that? It, it, that's a bad precedent, I think. And, and besides, Nintendo needs to push Nintendo Switch Online anyway. So I, I don't know. No, nothing about this makes any sense. With piracy. There are certain aspects of piracy I wholeheartedly disagree with. But with games like this, again, the Battle of Olympus, why are you why are you blocking that from being distributed? You know the, co the bottom line is, is these companies don't care about game preservation. All they care about is their bottom line. And they, look, you <laughs> the game in the game. You should be able to have access to it for the rest of your life. Correct to them? No, it's just the license, and they can take that license away from you. And they're like, hey, oh, remember that game you bought two or other three, two other times or three other times on our other platforms? Oh, you want to continue to play it? Buy it again, or sign up for a subscription service. And if you don't, we don't care if you spent your hard-earned money. We just want to get more money from you. For a corporation, we don't have a soul. We just pretend to be nice to you, so you want to give us more of your cash. This is Richard Review Tech USA signing out. Game preservation is such a fucking meme. <laughs> like, like these games don't go anywhere. They don't just disappear into the void. Like, they're still. They don't re-release them all the time. So it's the Disney Vault thing, right? If they don't re-release them all the time, they build up like a mystique and a sense of like excitement when they do get re-released. Like that's all they're doing, right? Um, like there, there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with what Nintendo is doing, and that's uh, that's kind of uh, you know, Rich did nothing to convince me that Nintendo doesn't give a damn about the consumers. So yeah, Rich is um, Rich is a tool. Hate his guts. Hate everything he stands for. Hate his clickbaiting. Hate his flip floppy. Um, <laughs> hate his opinions. Uh, hate everything about him. This guy is a complete joke.